Is this person really working in a computer lab in California? According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, in a closed environment, it is impossible to tell whether you are at the surface of the Earth or in a spaceship traveling with a constant acceleration equal to g. Let's consider Einstein's theory in a bit more detail. Albert Einstein published a series of papers around 1915, and these collectively became known as the general theory of relativity. An important concept of his theory is the principle of equivalence. According to the principle of equivalence, an inertial reference frame in a uniform gravitational field is equivalent to a reference frame in the absence of a gravitational that has a constant acceleration with respect to the inertial frame. Imagine a spaceship traveling with uniform velocity far from the effects of any gravitational fields. Under these conditions, everything inside the spaceship would float in a weightless state. However, the same would hold true if the spaceship were not in space, but instead were in free fall in the Earth's gravitational field. Now suppose the spaceship is again traveling in outer space, but this time it is traveling with a constant acceleration equal to g. The objects inside the spaceship would feel a pull equivalent to the pull of gravity, just as if the spaceship were sitting on the surface of the Earth. The principle of equivalence simply states that it is impossible to distinguish between the effects of a gravitational field and the effects of an equivalent The most important characteristic of the principle of equivalence is that it applies to all natural phenomena, including electromagnetic phenomena. Consider a spaceship that is accelerating at a very high rate. Now suppose a light pulse is emitted from one wall of the spaceship toward the opposite wall. An outside observer would see the light pulse as traveling in a straight line. Because the spaceship is accelerating, an outside observer would also see that the light pulse strikes the opposite wall of the spacecraft at a point that is not directly across from its original starting point. To an observer in the spaceship, however, the path of the light pulse is bent, resembling the path of a projectile in a gravitational field. According to the principle of equivalence, the path of light in a gravitational field should also be bent. It is not possible to observe the bending of light in the Earth's gravitational field under ordinary conditions. Perhaps an example will convince you of this. Suppose a light pulse is emitted horizontally from a flashlight near the surface of the Earth. If the pulse travels 30 meters horizontally, how far will it fall vertically in this time in response to the Earth's gravity? Incorrect. Be sure you're using the correct motion equation to solve for the vertical distance. Correct. A light pulse traveling a horizontal distance of 300 meters falls a vertical distance of only 4.9 picometers. This is much too small a distance for a person to discern. Though the bending of light in the Earth's gravitational field is impossible to see, the bending of starlight by the Sun has been observed during a solar eclipse, which supports Einstein's theory. Another consequence of Einstein's general theory of relativity is the prediction that gravity affects time. Consider three clocks, one at rest on the ground, the second at rest at the center of a rapidly spinning merry-go-round, and the third spinning around at the edge of the merry-go-round. If you were to stand at either of clocks one or two, you would observe clock three to run slower than either of the other two. However, the reasons for these differences are not the same. If you are standing at clock one, you observe clock three to run slower because of time dilation predicted by the principles of special relativity. If you are at clock two, however, the reason clock three runs slower is not because of time dilation. It can't be, since the two clocks are not moving with respect to one another. Instead, to a person at clock two, clock three appears to run slower because it is affected by the centripetal acceleration caused by the spinning of the merry-go-round. Therefore, according to the principle of equivalency, 
gravity should also cause a clock to run slower. This slowing of clocks by gravity can be observed in the large gravitational field of the Sun. Previously, we learned that a material emits light that is characteristic of the oscillation of its electrons. These oscillations act as an atomic clock and should run slower in the Sun's gravitational field than in the Earth's gravitational field. Therefore, light emitted at the Sun should have a frequency slightly lower than that emitted at the Earth. Because the low frequency end of the visible light spectrum is red, this shift in frequency is known as the gravitational redshift. Indeed, the gravitational redshift has been experimentally observed in light emitted by the Sun.